Hey folks, happy Thursday. This is day four in our uh, pastor's devotional. It is October 1st. Holy cow. Where has the year gone? I know in some ways we're just hoping that this year would end, that we could put 2020 behind us. Um, but also, how do we get to October already? So here we are, October 1st. We're continuing to work through our prayer calendars. I have my handy October prayer calendar. It was delivered to my mailbox um, uh, this week. And if I didn't get it in my mailbox, I would have gone to fumccv.org and um, found the uh, contact us button um, and found or found the news or info button where I could get a digital copy of this and of course print it out or just use the digital copy. Lots of ways you can get this. So we are continuing on this journey. The theme that we're going to be talking about Sunday in worship is that Christianity is communal. And so the prayer calendar asks us a question every day, gives us a couple of scriptures to look at, to think about um, more deeply what does that mean. Our goal here is that every day we've been talking about it, reading about it, praying about it, um, so that when we come to Sunday morning, um, we can really bring all of that spiritual energy to uh, the worship experience and the teaching. So hopefully this is helpful to you. So the, the theme for the week, Christianity is Communal, the question for today, October 1st, what does Christian community look like in our daily lives? What does Christian community look like in our daily lives? Three scriptures. We're going to start in 1 Timothy. I'll give you a second to open your Bibles up to 1 Timothy. So it's one of those little tiny books towards the end of the uh, New Testament. It's probably uh, 30, 40 pages um, uh, before the end of the New Testament. So 1 Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 1. 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. First of all, then, I urge you that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions. Isn't This is very fitting um, for the season we're in. Uh, last night was the... Uh, presidential debate, which was um, for many people difficult and painful to watch just because of the way that they interacted. And so we're praying for our country. We're praying for our leaders. That is for sure. For kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. Wouldn't that be amazing? that we in America could lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is one mediator between God and humankind, Jesus Christ himself a human, who gave himself a ransom for all. So what does Christian community look like in our daily lives? Well, we're, we're making supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings. And all of those are sort of different ways of, of um, different forms that we use in prayer. So sometimes when we're praying, we're, we are um, just sort of meditating and, and thanking God for God's presence. Sometimes when we're praying, we're asking God to show us something or teach us something. Sometimes when we're praying, we are asking God to do something, to be with this person, to heal this situation. Um, sometimes when we're praying, we're, we're just giving thanks um, for what God has given to us. And so that's what all of those words mean. Supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving. So do this for kings and all who are in high positions. So we're praying part of our Christian duty. And I'm recording this on Wednesday. The debates were last night. You'll be watching this tomorrow. So it would be 48 hours, uh, re I mean, uh, 24 hours removed from when I'm 
um, recording this and fresh on my mind is that debate last night and then all the talk around the debate. We recognize, Paul recognized, that a significant amount of the peace that came to people in the world, whether they're Christian or not, had to do with what kind of leadership was above them. And so his request of his followers was that part of the work that the Christian community did was to pray for our leaders. We pray for our leaders. All right, the next te uh, text from today is uh, 1 Thessalonians. And so the books right before Timothy are Thessalonians. So just turn back a couple pages. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. Now concerning love of the brothers and sisters, and when he says brothers and sisters, now he's talking about the Christian community. Um, so that, that, that he called those in the church were our brothers and sisters. Now concerning the love of the brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anyone write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. So what's happening here is that actually there has been some quarreling among the church members. Imagine that, quarreling among church members. There's been some quarreling among the church members. They have written Paul a letter and they have asked Paul to um, adjudicate whatever it is that they're quarreling about. Paul writes back to them. That's what we're reading is Paul's return letter to them. And Paul says, you do not need to have anyone write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do love all the brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, beloved, to do so more and more, to aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands as we directed you so that you may behave properly towards outsiders and be dependent on no one. Now it's very technical what the what the um, it, what the problem is at at this point. So the problem that these folks were expressing to Paul is that in that day, sort of the Christian teachers or the evangelists, the people traveling around, or even the leaders in the church, in that day they were some of them were taking advantage. So it was said, "Take nothing with you." Right? You remember the gospels? Take nothing with you. Go into the village and. Uh, knock on the doors, and when the people welcome you, you go in, you eat what they give you, you sleep where where they they share with you. And so it was the the church members' responsibility to provide for those evangelists. And what was happening is that the evangelists were taking advantage of it. So I want better sleeping quarters. I want more food. I want different food. I want to stay at that house, not at this house. So they were taking advantage of what he's writing to the leaders is he's saying, um, aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands. And so what, he, what, what became the, the norm or the, the hoped for expectation is that these traveling teachers and preachers and evangelists, that they would actually work and make money so they could provide their for their own needs and therefore they were teaching in the church. So it didn't matter. You didn't have church members sort of fighting over, well, we've got better accommodations, so come stay with us and or we've got better food, so come eat at our house and and sort of the that kind of quarreling that was going on. So church members, stop quarreling among yourselves. Leaders, start working so that you're not creating the atmosphere that would cause that quarreling among themselves. All right, and finally, Galatians. Um, and Galatians is just a, a little bit, maybe 10 pages earlier in the New Testament. Galatians chapter 6. I hope some of you are uh, learning um, to navigate in the Bible um, uh, more and where these books are because there's uh, that's one of the... Um, one of the benefits of doing this together. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. By contrast, the f oh, I'm sorry. 
My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So, he's saying, if you're together with a brother or sister of the church, and the brother or sister in the church is going down the wrong path, one, take care that you don't follow them down the wrong path. But two, correct them gently onto the right path. Bear their burden. Something is drawing them. Something is pulling them away from God. You bear that burden to draw them back. As opposed to you see them going down the wrong path. And so you shout it from the mountaintops that there's the sinner over there. There's the one doing wrong. Let's kick them out of the community. No, 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 no. Just go and get them gently. Pick them up in whatever way they need to be picked up and get them back on to the right path. For we bear one another's burdens. And when we treat one another in this way, we will fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ, love God, love yourself, love your neighbor. May we fulfill the law of Christ on this day as we do everything possible to be fashioned into this kind of Christian community. God bless you this day.